In this lesson, we're working with filters and working with styles. So I'm going to go ahead and go to File and Open. And there's a file in that Chapter 2 folder called Filters and Styles. We'll open that. And it looks a lot like a file that we just worked with a little bit ago, because it is almost exactly like that file we worked with a little bit ago. So let's start with our filters. Now we've got an image in here, and it has a levels filter applied to it. So for instance, notice that if I click off of that, I no longer am able to see that particular levels filter. So if I click on my plus here in my filters, I've got some options to adjust my filter, to adjust my color, levels, curves, hue and saturation. I can do a bevel and emboss. I can blur, Gaussian blur, motion blur, radial blur. I can add some noise, and I can even add a drop shadow or an inner shadow. And most importantly, I've got some Photoshop live effects, and we'll take a look at those in just a minute. Now, I also have some of those same filters available up in my menu. So if I go to filters here, I have some of my options to do my curves and blurs and sharpen, etc. And with an image, I also have some image editing tools, but we'll take a look at that in another chapter. I'll close that back up. Now let's take a look at our styles. I'm going to find my styles over my panel. Now, our styles have really improved over the years inside of Fireworks. So I've got lots of different styles to choose from. I've got chrome styles and dark chrome styles. And I'll just apply a few of those as we're moving along here. Some form input styles. So if we're doing a UI design, this comes in very, very, very handy. Let me stop at one of these for just a second. So if I take a look at my property inspector, I see my fill and I see a stroke for that particular style. So let's say that I want to change this a little bit. Let's say I make, oh, let me pull a color from out of my image here. And I'm going to change my colors here and make that a little bit lighter and maybe just a little bit more blue. And I'll add that and click OK. Now I'm going to add a filter here. So I will add a inner shadow, make that a little bit less. So I'm going to pull down on my depth and maybe soften that just a little bit and a little bit less on the opacity. So it'll make it a little less obvious. So if this is a style that I think that I would like on a regular basis, then I can save this as my own style. A little farther over in my property inspector, I see how I have changed. So I've got a little plus next to the form input style that I chose to begin with. So I've got some options down here at the bottom. So I can create a new style. I can redefine that style. I can clear any overrides, or I can break that link to that original style. So if I click this button right here and just create a new style, so I can give it a name. So I'll just say my input. It doesn't have any text in it, so I'm not worried about keeping my properties for my font or my text style, etc. So I've just got my fill type, my fill color, which effect that I have, stroke type and stroke color. And now I can click OK. And if I want to reapply that, it is now a part of my drop down menu right there in my property inspector. So when I'm doing wireframes, making my own buttons, that comes in very, very handy. So let's take a look at some of the other styles that we have. So now I have a current document. So it keeps track of every style that I've chosen so far. So that if I want to choose a style 
that I already have selected for something else, then I can just come here instead of have to try and define that in another drop down menu. So I have old paper styles. We'll apply a couple of those. And some pastels and some plastic styles. So these are really super handy in working with our documents on a regular basis. So if I want to make a button, this makes it very, very simple. And I basically just have a linear gradient and a stroke and a few filters that have been chosen as well. And if I'd like to change that, then I just come into my gradient and I make my changes and then I would have a brand new color. So even though there's a color chosen for your styles, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to keep it that way. And there are even some text styles. Even though we don't have any text at the moment, there's some different creative text styles, some tooltip styles, and even some wood styles. And I'll choose a couple of those. So you can see working with vector shapes is really interesting with fireworks because we can not only add different colors, especially colors from inside of our document, but we can add gradients, we can add filters and make styles to make our document as unique as we need it to look.